Honestly speaking, there is no well-defined current standard of care, and then that's a, that's a shortcoming um, of you know the current environment that we live in. We do feel that this is a pressing issue and needs more attention, not just by you know, on, the, on 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 part of the physicians and the bedside nurses, but also in terms of the the hospital administrators and people who run our hospital systems. That we need to have uh, better predefined guidelines on how we monitor our patients and how we decide who's at higher risk. There's no uniform way that patients are monitored post-operatively to assess for pending respiratory depression. The most common method though is intermittent vital sign checks where patients will have their vital signs checked every few hours or so. This is particularly problematic because patients can have a reassuring vital sign check because typically they wake up, they take deep breaths, and their saturations go up, and then they are left alone, and it can result in um, subsequent respiratory depressive events within very short periods of time after their reassuring vital sign checks. Nurses on the general care floor assess for respiratory compromise or respiratory depression by assessing respiratory rate, pulse oximetry, and sedation scale. Now they're supposed to be doing that at peak effect of the opioid, because most of the time it is the opioid that's causing the respiratory depression. And we do it routinely, at least every four hours, but in patients that are at higher risk, we assess them every two hours. That gets to be a stretch um, with the lack of nursing and the lack of staffing on floors, but most of the time, the standard of care is every four hours. The current standard of care for identifying respiratory depression uh, in surgical and medical patients receiving opioids in the general care floor varies significantly between institutions and practices. Generally, um, patients may receive pulse oximetry, but in uh, a limited number of patients may receive pulse oximetry, but the majority of patients will be monitored by clinical care, particularly by the nurses. But as we know, nurses um, take care of more than one patient at a time, so, they are, so this can be challenging. Um, not all patients receive pulse oximetry on a, on a routine basis.